Good morning, Friendship Church. Thank you so much for joining us online. We are so glad that you are with us this morning in spirit. Even though we're not in the same building together, we know that we're two or more gathered in the name of Jesus, that he is with us. And as we gather digitally in this platform, uh, we are honored uh, that you are joining us and we wanna celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on this Palm Sunday morning. And we're gonna uh, sing some songs of worship and we want you to join in with us where you are, whether you're watching on your cell phone, on a tablet or in your home uh, on a television with the people that you love. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, I want to invite you this morning to uh, either stand or sit in a way that honors the Lord from your heart and to sing with all that you have because this is what true worship is. It's just honoring Jesus for who he is, where we are. Uh, and that's what we want you to do with us to join in as we sing these songs of worship. And as we get started this morning, uh, I'm just going to pray and, and we will get right into singing. So will you pray with me? Will you stand to your feet, if you don't mind, where you are to honor the Lord and let us pray together. Father, we bless you this morning. And God, we glorify you for the, for the power uh, that you have given us through Jesus Christ, your son. Father, the, the power to come into your presence, to, to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and to declare your praises, God. And Father, we thank you for the power of the blood of Christ that forgives us and washes us clean. God, that, that we can stand before you this morning in righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus, God. The past is the past, Lord. You've forgotten our sins. You've moved them as far as the east is from the west. There's no condemnation in you. And God, none of this situation has overtaken you. You are not living in fear, God. And you chose, you, you, you command us not to be in fear. So God, in boldness, in joy, in gratitude, and in praise, we worship you this morning. So God, be blessed, I pray, by the, by the sounds that we make. May the meditation of our heart, may the words of our mouth be pleasing unto you. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. All right, friendship family all over the world, let's join in in worship. Oh! 
champion of heaven you made a way because your love in wave after wave crashes over me crashes over me for you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven together there's no one higher than you redeemer defender our great and mighty savior there's no one higher than you for you are always with us gracious to forgive us by your power we've been set free Lord we stand amazed in your presence astounded by your mercy and love our hands are lifted high in surrender your grace for me always in love but there is no one higher than our God there is no one greater than you let my life forever praise the glory of your name there is no one higher than you Majestic in wonder, you reign in love forever. There's no one higher than you. Your beauty, your splendor, your glory knows no measure. There's no one higher than you. For you are always with us. Just to forgive us by your power we've been set free Lord we stand amazed in your presence sounded by your mercy and love oh my hands are lifted high in surrender for
there is none more able. Christ our Savior, great and come on, see one more time. Say, there is no one higher, no one greater, no one like our God. There is none more able. Christ our Savior, great and Lord, we say your presence. To Lord, we stand amazing your presence. Sounded by your mercy and love Our hands are lifted high in surrender But your grace for me is always enough And there is no one higher than our God There is no one greater than you let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you. Let my life. Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you. Isn't it an awesome thing to know that there is no one higher than our God? In fact, when we believe that God is the highest thing in our lives, we are living by faith. And when we live by faith, we do the things that we know God wants us to do. And that's exactly what we're doing here at Friendship, especially when it comes to the financial situation that we find ourselves in. We are still living by faith. We are still doing the things that God has called us to do. And we are able to do that because we know that you live by faith and we know that you will faithfully continue to give even in the midst of a pandemic. Now, one of the things I need to be transparent about is to say that if you don't have a job right now and you've got no income, then we don't want you to give. God understands that. But if you are off work, but you are still receiving any kind of income, we hope that you will continue to be faithful in your giving. We're still doing all the things that we need to do, and we're offering still various ways that you can give. You can give online. You can go click right now at friendshipumc.org, and you can give in many different ways. Secondly, you can just put it in an envelope and do snail mail. That still works. Or you can contact your bank for a bank transfer. Or like many of us do at all of our campuses, we set up a recurring bill pay so that during times like this, the church doesn't suffer. I want to encourage you not to live by fear but to live by faith. And when we live by faith, we continually, through our faith, do the things that God wants us to do. So I hope that right now that you will go and you will click online giving and give to the church as we continue to be faithful to Athens and our surrounding communities. Thank you very much for your faithfulness. Yeah. 
friendship where we love God, love others, and serve. I'd like to welcome you this morning to our Palm Sunday service that I have entitled Hope in the Midst of Confusion, because once again, we find ourselves meeting during a pandemic. And I know when all this started, it was very confusing. How long will it last? Will it affect us? And I really started to take note, and I know you think this is shallow, but this is true. I really started to take note when I heard that Walt Disney World was going to be closed. And I did a little research, and I didn't realize, but Walt Disney World has only been closed seven times up until the pandemic. In fact, it was closed six times because of hurricanes and one time after 9-11 up until this point. Now, I've had the opportunity, I've been very blessed to be able to go to Orlando periodically and I like to use a program called Orbits.com. You may be able to use something that, uh, you may like Travelocity, but you, you understand what I'm talking about. And what I have found is oftentimes that this becomes very confusing for me because I like to do the bundle package. And whenever you go do that, you get a better price and you're looking for a hotel, a flight, and a car all bundled together. And it sounds good at booking until you start really looking at what you're getting. 
because you have to go in and you have to determine what flight you want to take because the flight that they have chosen may leave at 2 a.m. from Nashville and you may not want to leave at 2 a.m. And then you have to go in and pick out what's your departure, arrival, and then you've got to go look at your hotel. Is it close enough to the airport as you wanted? And you start changing all these things around. And what exactly is a mid-sized car, according to them? And do I need insurance? Do I need their rental insurance or do I need my own insurance covered on my own policy? And it gets very, very confusing. But right in the midst of all of that confusion, hope arrives for me in the form of my wife, Julie. Because right before I go to hit the book button, she gets to come in and look over everything that I've already chosen and determine if everything is correct. And then we punch the buy button. But you know what? I'll be honest. I think sometimes everything can look good at booking, but you're really not made of anything unless you execute well. And sometimes the execution can be as confusing as the booking, if not more so. Because if you're like me, I start wigging out whenever I have a trip like this, and I begin to wonder, what what time do I need to leave in order to get to the airport? Where is long-term parking so that I know how long it's going to take me to get there? How often do the shuttles run? Do I want to drop my baggage off at the front or just keep it and ride it on the, the van? And it continues to move on and on. How long will it take me to get through TSA? And will they pull me out of line? And we all know what it feels like. When you get to that line, you have to put your hands up and that thing revolves around you. And last time I went on a trip, I got pulled out twice and they touched me up and it was uncomfortable. And so I began to think about all these things. But right in the midst of all of that, hope arrives as we find ourselves at the gate. And I can kind of exhale and everything gets better. But I have to do one last check. And I like to go up to the desk, even though it's printed everywhere, and just ask one more time, am I at the right gate? And so after that, I can kind of just sit, maybe go get some food, people watch, which I love to do, but everything seems to be good at that point. Now today, the people of Israel, they find hope in the midst of confusion, and it's going to come in the form of Jesus. Now, of course, they're not going to Orlando, but they'll be going to Jerusalem. And the story can be found in Luke, I'm sorry, in Matthew And here's what the story of Matthew says, and I find it very interesting. As they approach Jerusalem, now remember, Jerusalem now is going to swell in attendance. It's a crazy place right now. They approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone said, no, I want you to understand, this is important, because if they don't get this right, then they're just merely stealing somebody else's stuff. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. Now, as we continue in this story, this is going to become a story of confusion, and hope is going to arrive in just the right time. Say to the daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches. Thus, we believe they were a palm branch and thus Palm Sunday from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophets from Nazareth in Galilee. And so it is that we have this great thing happening We have the Palm Sunday story unfolding. Now, I told you this was a story of confusion. So where is the confusion? Well, let me tell you this. Jesus is the epicenter of confusion when it comes to Palm Sunday. Because you see, the people of Israel had never experienced a Messiah before. Will he look like what they thought he should? Will he smell like they thought he should? Will he do the things that he's supposed to do? Things that would be noble of a Messiah. 
Will he put down Roman oppression? Will he liberate all the people? You see, they had never been through a Messiah before. And so everything looked good at booking, but what about execution? Well, let me tell you this. It's all about to come to a head on this day that we know as Palm Sunday. Because let me tell you this, in the midst of confusion, make no mistake about it, hope can still be found. In fact, that's our main point. Never lose hope. Even in the midst of confusion, hope is always available through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's the story of Israel. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. You see, the Israelites had been waiting on a Messiah for a long, long time. In fact, a God that comes in the midst of confusion isn't something new to those of us that follow Christ. In fact, that's why they have come to meet on this very day, a day known as Passover. They've come to remember that time in their life. And you want to talk about a confusing story. You have a gentleman by the name of Moses. He's told by God to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, to liberate the, the Israelites, the Hebrews. And he's confused because... Well, he's just not a good speaker. In fact, we believe he had a speech impediment, but God says, don't worry about that. We're going to send your brother Aaron to be with you. And so Moses does what God asked him to do after some negotiations. And he goes to Pharaoh and he says, hey, you need to let my people go or else. And God had already stacked the deck for Moses. And he had several plagues lined up and he would tell Moses, you go tell him, if you don't let my people go, then this plague is going to happen throughout all of Egypt. And then the confusion sets in once again, because he goes and he tells them, and, and then Pharaoh says, okay, I'll let your people go, but then he doesn't, leaving the Israelites all dressed up and nowhere to go, wondering, should we keep our bags packed on the porch or put them back in our drawers? Until, until. Now you might wonder, why God would go so many times and give Pharaoh so many opportunities was because we serve a God of pursuit, a God of grace. He gave them chance after chance after chance to do the right thing. But I believe with Moses and, and God in general, there comes a time when he says, that's enough. You're taking advantage of me. You're taking me for granted. And so he says, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. And here's what I want you to tell him. I want you to tell him that if you don't let my people go this time, there's going to be a death angel that's going to go through all of Egypt and kill all the firstborn males. Now, you want to talk about confusion once again? Because now the, the Israelites are wondering, well, hold on. We also live in Egypt. W what are we supposed to do about that? But right in the midst of confusion, hope arrives. Because God gives them a provision. He says, here's what I want, Moses, you to tell the people to do. I want you to take a lamb, and I want you to sacrifice it, and then I want you to put the blood over the door seal, and when the death angel comes through, it will pass over the Hebrew children, and thus the idea of Passover. But once again, everything looks good at booking, but what about execution? Well, sure enough, that night when the death angel came over, all the Israelite children were spared just as God had said, because hope still comes even in the midst of confusion. Now, I know right now that we find ourselves in a time of confusion, a time that is known as the coronavirus, and I know that it has changed our lives, at least for a certain period of time. I know there's a lot of confusion that goes along with it. How long will it last? How much toilet paper do I need? What kind of provisions do I need? Is the cure worse than the virus itself? How long can the economy withstand everyone out of work? And there's so many confusing things, so many good questions that, well, a lot of them we don't know the answer to. But one of the ones that made me the maddest was when the stimulus package was trying to be passed that we even had... We even had our politicians try to politicize. Now, I don't care what side of the aisle that you're on. That was just wrong and created even more confusion. Why can't we get this thing passed? And even more importantly, perhaps, we may be confused about when Disney World may open again. Now, I say that somewhat facetiously, but the realistic part of it is, is that when we hear that Disney is open again, then we know that we are on the other side of the pandemic 
and that hope once again has come in the midst of confusion. But you see, as followers of Christ on this Palm Sunday, we have always been known to have grit. We have been through things like this before. Many of you have been through great depressions. Many of us have been through 9-11s. Many of us have been through catastrophic events in California, in different places of the world, earthquakes, all kinds of tsunamis. And you know what? We're still here to tell about it. In fact, we have survived 100% of the hardest days of our lives, and we have lived to tell about it. So we're going to get to the other side of this. There's always hope when we follow Christ. But these plagues aren't something new to us. In fact, I was reading earlier this week that between the years 250 and 270, there was a time in which a plague came through Rome. They weren't sure if it was smallpox or the measles, but they were losing 5,000 people a day just in Rome alone. And the people fled the cities, the physicians left, but many of the Christians stayed. And they took care of those in need because we look out for the least of these as we learned last week. But not only that, that wasn't the first plague that we had done the same. There was a plague that had happened a few years earlier and the Christians did the exact same thing. I was reading an article from a professor of New Testament at Notre Dame and he said this, epidemic that seemed like the end of the world actually promoted the spread of Christianity. By their actions, In the face of impossible death, Christians showed their neighbors that Christianity is worth dying for. So remember, in the midst of confusion, hope still presents itself at just the right time. And with God's help, just as the people of Israel got to the other side, as Jesus came and rode into Jerusalem and got to the other side, we too, with God's help, We'll see ourselves through this pandemic. So what about now? What is something that we can be doing now to make that happen? Well, here are your next steps. Pray for all our healthcare workers. There are so many people that work in the healthcare industry that they're going in every day and risking their lives in order to save others. Be in prayer for them. And what I want to add to this, and this is crazy, but be in prayer for those that are still operating restaurants that gives us an opportunity to get out for just a little while and just kind of forget some things because they're at risk as well. And yet they go every day and they help take care of food and take care of us and our mental state of being. Number two, pray for the world. A lot of things are happening all over. In the United States, it seems like we've done a good job of containing it in the majority of places. And other places, not so much. And so there's a lot of death still taking place. Please pray for the world. Number three, call or email someone this week and show them the love of Christ. Do something to make a difference. Maybe this week, you'll be the hope in the midst of confusion. But ultimately this morning on Palm Sunday, remember that God loves you. Remember to never lose hope because we're going to get through this as well and try to be the hope that someone else needs. So thank you for tuning in online this morning. We miss you. It's odd to be here in an empty room. I cannot wait till we meet again. And we're going to meet online next week for our Easter service, but I want to tell you this. The next time we meet in person where everybody can be here together, We are going to have an incredible Easter celebration, and I can't wait until that time. So until then, take all the precautions you need and never lose hope because hope comes oftentimes in the midst of confusion. Have a great day. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is 
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone. trumpet sound Oh may I in, in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone far less to stand before the throne Christ of Lord cornerstone Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior. Amen. Well, I tell you what, friendship, I hope that you will stand on the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus, no matter what you're facing, no matter what fears are ahead, or what happens in the days ahead, that you will stand in hope on Christ the solid rock, which is Jesus. Listen, we have just such an amazing opportunity right now, being the church in public, to that when we go out into public, if we have to, uh, I understand there is a quarantine rule, but if you have to go out in public to share the love of Christ with somebody, people are discouraged, people are dealing with depression and anxiety and fear, and Christ is our hope, and we're not going to give up on that hope because Christ is absolute. He's everything that we need, and every part of our heart needs to 
to be submitted to him. And when we go out in public, make sure that we are sharing love with Christ. I want to encourage you to take some of those next steps that Pastor Tony uh, mentioned about praying for people in hospitals, in healthcare, in restaurant businesses. And picking up the phone and just encouraging somebody, connect with people, uh, make sure that you're checking in on folks that are shut in and widows and those who are sick and uh, uh, alone. Make sure that you're doing your part to share the love of Christ with everybody as, as much as the Holy Spirit prompts you. So we pray that you do that. We pray that you are the church this week. Uh, and that you're loving others, loving God, and serving as, as best you can. Listen, I want to encourage you that if you do go out and get, um, if you order groceries and, and, and it's groceries that you pick up at a grocery store and they load them in your car, make sure you tip like Jesus. If you're going to pick up curbside, tip like Jesus. Uh, just be a, a witness in that because uh, everybody's... Uh, Everybody in that industry is hurting right now financially. So make sure that you do that and find it in your, in your heart to be a giver this week, okay? God bless you. Have a great week, and we will see you hopefully as soon as possible. God bless. Thanks for watching. We would love for you to connect with us online. On our website, you will find up-to-date information about everything happening around here. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are so glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy your friendship experience.